Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at two common questions or issues that people experience with Power Query. And they are, what is this drill down option that you get in the menu? And what is this formula.firewall error that I have encountered. So let's look at our scenario. On the BBC website, they have all of these Football League tables. So here we have the English Premier League, but I have this search box where if I type the Italian Serie A and choose that, I can look at their league table and look at the URL in the bar above and a consistency where it says Italia Serie A. And if I was to change this to the German Bundesliga, here we have this table and look at that URL again. That's going to become important. What we want to do is import a league table that we choose from a list into Excel. I simply want to select English Premier League or German Bundesliga, etc. And it comes into our Excel spreadsheet. So this is what I've set up on a spreadsheet. I have picked five of those league tables by name. Then I have this section of the URL. And then you can see the formula in the bar above being used in column D to join the complete URL together. That's been used on the BBC website. And if I come over to my sheet called table, here I have a drop down list of those five league tables. And when I choose one, a simple VLOOKUP in the cell to the right, that's bringing across the URL. And when I select one from this list, it's going to import the data from the BBC website. So let's look at getting this underway. I will click inside that table that I'm using with the league table dropdown. And from the data tab, click from table slash range to load that into Power Query. Now this is where we will first of all check the name of the query on the right hand side. And that's picking up the name that I've given to the table that we've just loaded, which is league list. I'm going to change that to URL because that's what we're going to use this for. And then in the table, I will right mouse click on the full URL data and choose drill down. So at the moment, I have the table, one row, two columns. By using drill down, I get to that specific value. So now that is done, and I'm happy with the name on the right hand side, I'm simply going to come to home, close and load, close and load two. And I'm just going to load this as a connection and click OK. And there is our first query called URL connection only that is drilled down to the value in cell D2 of this sheet, if you want to think of it that way. But it's coming from that table. Now we need to import the league table data. Now, ultimately, this will be dependent on what league people choose from that drop down. But first of all, we need some sample data. So I'll just click in D2, where currently we've got the English Premier League. I'm going to copy the value from that cell. I'm going to click in cell B4, because ultimately that's where I want it to appear. And then in data from web. And I'm going to paste that URL into the box provided and click OK. It's now establishing that connection to the BBC website and to that specific URL. And I have the different elements of the web page that I can choose from. I'm going to select table zero because I know that's the one I want. And we can see on the preview on the right that we have 
the league table data from that URL. If I click on transform data below, this will take us into the Power Query editor to maybe perform some simple edits before we load it back into the sheet. Now for a couple of simple edits for the moment, I would like to remove the column two, that's not very helpful, so I'll right mouse click and remove that. And I can see column one doesn't actually have a header. So I'm going to double click in the header area and name that rank. Then on the right hand side, the query name is table zero. That's not very good. Let's change that to get league table because that's what this query is doing. And there's our applied steps underneath. Now with that done, I can click on close and load, close and load two. Going to put it as a table in this existing worksheet in the cell that I selected before I kicked off the query, B4. Click OK, that data will simply be loaded in. So there we have the data from that URL that I pasted in. But at the moment, if I choose a different league table from the drop down, it's not going to change this one. So let's look at getting that sorted. On the right hand side, I'll right click on that query and edit it to take me back into the editor. I'm going to click on the source step above so you can access any step from your query. And in the formula bar, I can see the specific URL that I pasted in there. If you cannot see the formula bar, you can click on the view tab and make it appear from there. Now, if I just open up the queries pane on the left hand side to remind you that I have the value in this URL query that I want to use. So in the formula bar here, I'm going to remove this specific string that I've got there. And I'm going to type URL to reference the other query. So here we have that formula.firewall error, where it is complaining that we are referencing other queries that may not directly access the data source and that we should rebuild this data combination. So it is not happy that we're using data from another query. So let's look at getting this solved. Now there are some good sources online where you can look at information behind this error and different techniques to solve it. I think the easiest way in this example is to join these into one query rather than having one that references the other. So I'm going to select my URL query on the left and from the home tab, use the advanced editor button so that I can see the M code generated via steps. And I'm going to select this section of it and I'm going to copy those steps. I'm going to cancel this window, select my other query, get league table where the error is, come into the advanced editor and I'm going to paste this before the steps of that query. So rather than having this query reference the other one, I'm just going to combine them into one. So if I paste those steps into there and I'll leave this vacant line although it's doing no benefit so that we can see the two different queries in a visual way. Now, I don't want to change anything in the first query because that's fine. The issue is with the second one. The only thing I'm going to add to the first query is a comma because I can see at the bottom of the window at the moment a warning that a token comma is expected. And that's because every line, as you can see, has a comma on the end except the last one. So if I click on the end of the last line of the URL query that I've pasted in, enter a comma, 
and the error at the bottom is removed, but it's replaced with another error. It's now complaining that a variable named source is already defined in the scope. So we can see that we have two source variables and it's not happy about that. That's not unique. So I guess I could just change the next one to be source two. That would solve that issue. Now it's complaining about a variable for a change type step. For the same issues, we've got two change type steps. So I guess I could call it change type two, but maybe I don't need that step. So another option is that I may just delete that step completely. I'm not sure how much I really need another change type step. I could always add that in again in Power Query if there's problems. Now underneath it's saying that there's no syntax errors that have been detected. So it seems quite happy. So let me click on done. But it's not happy. Look at this. The column two of the table wasn't found. I have a different error. Now, if we look at the applied steps on the right, I'm currently on the last applied step where we have this error of column two not being found. Now, I can click on the previous steps and try and trace back why these errors are happening. And we can see that on the previous one that also complains about column two. Now, column two is the column that we removed earlier as we went through our edits and if I click on the previous step to that data zero I have a different type of error but it's also complaining about a column or a field that cannot be found this time it's called data and then as I click before that now we seem to be running okay it's just those last three now back over into the league table query, if I go into the advanced editor and let's look at fixing this. Now we can see that in the M code, in each line, it refers to the previous line. And that is our problem. Those steps are trying to refer to a previous line that we have since either removed or changed. So for example, let's begin with this URL query that refers to the other query that we drill down into called URL. But what I really want that to do is refer to the name of the previous step. So I'm going to delete that URL, just simply take a copy of the name of that previous step and paste it inside those brackets instead because that's what it should be referred to once that query's got uh, that URL that value out and then as we look to the next line this references the source step but it's not called source anymore because we renamed it source 2 earlier so let me change that to source 2 now it's going to be successful in finding that data field. Now it's looking at the right step. And then finally, as we come to the next one, this refers to the change type step. That was removed, and this is why we can't find column two. Now I could change the change type step to data zero, because that's the name of the previous step. But in this example, I'm just going to remove those two steps completely just to show that we can do that. And then we'll put those back in once we have our league table and maybe want to do some other transformations and other edits. Now, I do have a complaint at the bottom that we can't have a comma preceding the, uh, the line in. So I'm just going to remove that final comma in the lines. And this last bit that refers to renamed columns should really be referring to data zero now as it's the final step. So let me just copy that data zero. And I'll paste it in there and click, click on done. 
And here we have it. We have our data now being pulled in. We have our league table. I'm going to right click and remove column two. I'm going to rename this rank. And then to take it further, I'm now going to tidy up that last column on form. Just to take this video that little bit extra. Because let's have a closer look here. This is showing the previous results. And there is a full stop between each result. So I'm going to select that column. I'm going to come up to the split column button on home by a delimiter. I'm going to specify the delimiter as a full stop. Each occurrence, click OK. I'm going to shoot through this. It's now split the different forms into different columns. Now what I'm going to do is select each column. I do want the form to be shown, just not in this horrific way. Let me select each one. Form six looks useless in this league table right now. And um, what do I want? I want to transform and I want to extract the first characters because the result is the very first character in each column. One character, click OK. Look at this, wins, draws, losses. Let me remove number six. And then I'm going to just scroll across and select these columns again. One, two, three. Where's four and five come here? Four, five. Merge columns at the top. Do I want to give it a nice name? I do, I'm gonna call it form. Do you want a separator? No. Click OK. Look at that. We have now a form guide for the last five results. Now I'm going to close and load this home. Close and load. Close and load. In it comes. Now here's the big moment. I come up to my drop down. I choose German Bundesliga. I come up to data. Refresh all. And here we have the data from the German Bundesliga. And indeed, I could choose any league table from the drop down, refresh, and Power Query or go over to the website, grab the correct league table, and pull it into our Excel spreadsheet. So that is this video. It was to focus on the drill down, an example of why that's useful, and a way of solving the formula.firewall error. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel, and come check us out at computergaga.com.